Okay, we are in module nine and we are up to pages 289 to 292. Remember module nine is about the molecular geometry. So we are looking at the shapes of the molecules and we're gonna get into those shapes today. Uh, the way that scientists have determined the shapes of molecules is through this theory, the BSEPR theory. And it stands for valence shell electron repulsion theory. This theory states that molecules will attain whatever shape keeps the valence electrons of the central atom as far apart from one another as possible. I'll read that again. The valence shell electron repulsion theory states that molecules will attain whatever shape keeps the valence electrons of the central atom as far apart from one another as possible. So you look at the central atom, and you look at what valence electrons it has, and remember that electrons repel each other because they have like forces. They all have negative, a negative charge. So electrons repel each other, and so chemists have tried to determine or predict the shapes of molecules based on that. What you need to know from this theory, you need to know that the molecular shapes and the names, there are, I believe, four of them that we're gonna go over. And you need to know for each shape, the angles that exist between the bonds, okay? So let's talk about our first shape. So far, we have been drawing Lewis structures for both atoms and molecules, but Lewis structures, of course, are just 2D, two-dimensional, on paper. In the real world, we live in a three-dimensional world, and so we're gonna now see uh, the geometry and the three-dimensional shapes of these. So these are the three-dimensional molecule shapes. Number one. Number one is called a tetrahedron. And you can see it in your book in figure 9.1. Tetrahedron. And this is in figure 9.1. Okay, a tetrahedron, we're going to first write down some facts about it, and then I'm going to show you with some toothpicks and marshmallows what this shape looks like. Tetrahedron occurs with four electron groups it occurs with four electron groups and no non bonding electrons you'll see what that means in a moment for example, CH4, one carbon, which is the central atom, four hydrogens around it. This is called methane, CH4. The two-dimensional way that we would draw it would be the Lewis structure, and it would look like this. C with four bonds to hydrogen coming out in each direction. Okay, that you know very well as the Lewis structure. However, when we imagine this in 3D, we can keep in mind that electron pairs want to move as far apart from each other as possible. Each of these bonds is an electron pair. There are two electrons that are being shared. Okay, so like when up here when we said this occurs with four electron groups, this would be one electron group, two, three, and four. And these electron pairs want to move as far apart as possible. So we end up with a shape like this. Carbon is in the middle. Hydrogen, there's one hydrogen coming straight up. Remember, this is gonna be a little hard to draw the three-dimensional shape on a two-dimensional board or in your notes, but this is how we do it. Uh, you draw one H over to the side at about that type of angle. 
to represent a hydrogen coming out at you, you draw this little uh, like triangular shape like that so that you imagine one hydrogen coming forward and then the other hydrogen you draw with a dotted line to represent that hydrogen going uh, behind. So this is how you would draw it. And then I also mentioned that you need to know the bond angles or the angles that exist between the bonds. Between each of these bonds is 109 degrees for a tetrahedron. So this is the first shape, okay? So I'll try to show this to you. So this would be like what the Lewis structure looks like, right? And each of the bonds has a 90 degree angle in between. But as you can see, it's flat and the electrons are pushing apart from each other. So these bonds wanna get as far apart as possible. So they're gonna take advantage of the three dimensional world and they're gonna move into a shape that looks something like this. Okay, and we will play around with this in class a little bit too but they're gonna spread apart into this three-dimensional shape where each of the bonds is separated not just by 90 degrees, but by 109 degrees. So it's gonna move into a shape like this, okay? And it's supposed to be any way you flip it, it stays the same. And each bond is separated by 109 degrees in between both of them. So when I tried to draw it on the board, you can see one hydrogen goes up, one hydrogen goes off to the side, one hydrogen is coming toward us, kind of out from the, um, the board here, and one hydrogen is going behind, represented by that dotted line. So that is a tetrahedron shape. Okay, that's our first shape. And now we're going to move to our second shape. The second shape builds off of the tetrahedron shape with a slight difference. So we take what we knew from the tetrahedron shape, but not all molecules have four electron groups with no non-bonding pairs. So now we're going to talk about what that means. What is a non-bonding electron pair? So our second shape is called the pyramidal shape. Number two is a pyramidal shape. And you can see this in figure 9.2. It occurs, just like the tetrahedron, it occurs with four electron groups, which can mean single bonds. It did in the CH4 case. Those four electron groups were each single bonds. It occurs with four electron groups, but here's the difference. One of those electron groups, but one, is a non-bonding electron pair. Okay? The pyramidal shape resembles the tetrahedron, but but it's like one of those legs of the tetrahedron is missing. But a leg is missing. Also, you need to know that the non-bonding electron pair that we will draw in just a minute repels more than bonds do. So the angle between, okay, the non-bonding electron pair repels more than the bonds do. You'll see what it means when we draw the shape. 
so the angle between the bonds is smaller than the tetrahedron, is smaller than the tetrahedron. Remember, the tetrahedron had a bond angle of 109 degrees. This one is 107 degrees. So it's just slightly smaller. Now it's time to look at an example so you can see what I am talking about. For example, NH3, okay? This is called ammonium. And if you were to draw the Lewis structure in 2D, you would easily come up with this. You would see that nitrogen has uh, five valence electrons. So you would see that each of its lone electrons is gonna share an electron with one of hydrogens. So the, the Lewis structure would look like this. Now in three dimensions, it becomes this. And we can spin it any way we want to. So chemists usually put, if there is a non-bonding electron pair, that's what this is right here, they usually put those on the top, okay? So nitrogen has one pair of electrons that is just um, that are just paired up together. They are not part of a bond. That's what we mean by non-bonding electron pair. And then the other legs of what would look like a tetrahedron would go like this. One H would come out here. Remember the electron pair is going straight up. And then we've got one hydrogen coming out toward us. And then one hydrogen going behind. Okay, and then we said that the electron pair repels more strongly than the bonds do. For some reason, those electron pair, uh, pairs just need a little bit more wiggle room and they're able to push against the bonds and make themselves a little bit more space than the bonds are able to. So the bonds get crowded a little bit closer together, so the bond angle is 107 degrees. So let's take a look at our tetrahedron that I was trying to show you before, something like this, right? Where we have all of the bond angles at 109 degrees. Kind of have to play with my marshmallows here. But for a pyramidal shape, there are four electron groups, but one of them is not a bond to another atom. One of them is just a lone electron pair. So we're gonna take that bond away. There would just be two electrons up here above the nitrogen, leaving this pyramidal shape. So that's the second shape. Go ahead and see if you can, let's see, are there any examples for you to work through? I believe that there are, no, there are not yet. So I hope you understood from that and we will go on to the next couple shapes in the next video.